Political parties in Kogi State are warming up for the November 21st governorship election with campaigns gathering momentum. The state governor and candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Idris Wada, has given assurance that if elected a second time, he would consolidate on his achievement in the last four years. The governor made the pledge when he campaigned in a Galamela Odolu local government area. Supporters of the People's Democratic Party in the Galamela Odolu local government area of Kogi State all gathered at the RCM Primary School playing ground for the campaign rally of Mr. Idris Wada in company of his wife, Hajja Halima Wada, and the immediate past governor of the state, Ibrahim Idris. <laughs> The leadership of the PDP in Kogi State gives reasons why Governor Wada should be voted for a second term. The executive governor of Kogi State by the special grace of God and who he continue to be, come November 21st, is a man with great sense of humility, transparency, fairness, honesty, fearlessness. A man who respects equalization. Then the man of the moment walks to the podium amid cheers from his supporters. He promises to deliver more dividends of democracy if voted in for a second term. This government is sincere. We are working within the finances available to us. We will not tell you lies. We are working hard to get the bill out money to pay our teachers and local government employees. of other leaders here, by the grace of God, within the next few weeks, this bailout money will come to From the headquarters of Igala Mela, the campaign team moves to UAC Primary School playing ground in Ogolawo. At this campaign ground, party supporters are here to show solidarity for the incumbent governor. Here, Captain Wada receives an award as the best performing governor since the creation of Kogi State from an election campaign support group. This time, his message is one of reassurance. He urges the people not to be deceived by detractors, but to call to mind the achievements of his administration in the last four years. We have built a lot of schools. We have renovated many schools. We have built health centers, and we have renovated many health centers. We have brought electricity to many villages and towns in the local government. Four more years to we'll consolidate on what we have achieved so far, and we will do more for the people of the local government. And if this turnout translates to figures at the polls, Captain Wada might just be on his way to victory, at least in this location. It is Operation War Against Cattle Rustlers in Kano State. And the Emir of Kano, the Governor and the State Commissioner of Police seem all united on this matter. About 78 suspected cattle rustlers are currently in police custody and are being quizzed on the whereabouts of their colleagues. Cattle rustling has become a major problem in Kano State and hundreds of cattle have been stolen while many herdsmen have been killed in the process of protecting their animals. It's not every time that the Emir of Kanu, his MNS, Mohammed Sanusi II, will get involved in state matters. But this matter is considered so weighty that he has joined the governor of the state, Al Haji Abdullahi Ganduje, and the state commissioner of police, Mr. Musa Katsina, in fighting cattle rustlers, who they say have made life unbearable for Fulani herdsmen in Kanu state. <laughs> These people are supposed to be executed in accordance with the Islamic laws because they have killed, raped and robbed people of their cattle and other valuable items. I therefore call on the court to do the right thing in accordance with the law. It's been sleepless night for the Commissioner of Police whose duty it is to protect lives and property. And this war against cattle rustlers is one that must be won. Apart from the recovery of 818 cows, 
arrest of 72 miscreants, especially cattle rustlers. I, I would normally prefer to call them bandits, because what they do in that way is nothing but banditry activities. You go there and you drove, you sack the whole community, you rape, you, you, you create fear, and you drive pleasure in seeing people regularly in pains. They have no uh, com uh, any iota of compassion in them. We went and uh, we have 8 around 13. We have recovered many weapons that we have seen. We have also paraded uh, some of them. Equally disturbed by the increasing cases of cattle rustling is the state governor, who said he will continue to give support to the police in their effort to get rid of these marauders in the state and environs. The commissioner of police and action man swung into action as a result of what we are saying today, they have recovered 818 cows and they have made a number of arrests as we are seeing before us. Some of the criminals are in uniform, military uniform, police uniform. And the worst part of it is that some of the criminals are the Fulani themselves. Business can only thrive where criminal activities are curtailed to a reasonable level. And this united front among the Emir, the Governor and the Commissioner of Police is one that may bring about the desired environment to foster business activities. Over 40 suspected social miscreants have been arrested by the Rapid Response Squad at different dark spots in Lagos. The arrests are coming as part of the Amber Month security program by the Lagos State Government. In a statement by the commander of the response squad, Olatunji Disu, the action is a continuous onslaught against criminals to create a secure environment for prospective investors and residents. Mr. Disu is also showing residents that the spate of armed robbery and criminal attacks will soon be cleared out. Meanwhile, the Bono State Government has been urged to pursue an agro-based economy that would create wealth for the people. Participants at the first Bono State Stakeholders Forum adopted that position during an interaction with Governor Samuel Otum on his performance in his first 100 days in office. They say Bono State must prioritize agriculture to give it comparative advantage over other states which are dependent on crude oil. Recent unstable climate in the global crude oil market has made it difficult for states in Nigeria to manage their financial obligations. As a way forward, leaders of thought at the first Benue State Stakeholders Forum seek a return to agriculture where the state has comparative advantage with its fertile soil and vast agricultural resources. We have good soil, we have good water. A former governor of the state, Senator George Akume, challenges other influential Benue indigens to rise up to the challenge and create wealth for the people through agriculture. So, it's a challenge to all of us that, of course, the support coming from government for mechanization of agriculture, an active application of machines in the agricultural sector. The governor is also advised to ensure that the state's looted funds are repatriated. All those found beauty of corruption should not only have whatever they have to be confiscated, but that they should also go to jail. Expectedly, Governor Samuel Otom lists the agricultural revolution as part of his administration's resolve to address unemployment. He also speaks about the success of his amnesty program before delving into his probe of the Suswam administration. Those who establish cases of corruption must be held to account through restitution, which is also a legal. This is one of the ways we can protect the assault on the common wealth of the people and set a precedent which all of us who are principal actors today will constantly be reminded that our actions in public office 
To underscore his preparedness for the task ahead, the governor also launches a three-year development plan, which hopefully should see the food basket of the nation live up to its nickname. When the news at 10 returns, our community report focuses on the flooding in Oguta community in Imo State. Please join us again.